Microphone's not working. It's not working. Hmm. No, I'm still. There you go. All right, I'll hold this right here. I'm going to start off with the police department as a transportation of emotions. Yes, uh, I want to bring you up to date. Uh, we gave two promotions last month of Sergeant uh, Old Police Department. I want to let you know that uh, Sergeant Old Police came to us in 2018, so that's six years long, four years of And in the short time he's been with us, he's been a recipient of numerous awards. Two more of these. Life saving awards, uh, even citation, and he's also recognized for the Chamber of Commerce uh, Public Safety. So, Sergeant Taylor So uh, I hope that has 
of God of Defender can actually also be cited under code case in addition to this legislation. A couple of the quick highlights that Andrew's addressed in here <coughs> is um, the definition of a sexual offender, to rewrite it to include out-of-state offenders. Um, the current ordinance does not include um, safety zones, the new ord ordinance establishes them. The current ordinance does not address out-of-state convictions, um, so there's zero protection beyond what the state has prescribed. And as noted, the new ordinance will cover out-of-state convictions. The code compliance, while it's not new, it is a tool um, that can also be used on a land uh, owner or landlord if they're renting uh, a premise. Um, they're also uh, requiring that a offender uh, notify the local police department within 30 days before relocation into the city to ensure they meet state and local guidelines. Um, we've included park, playground, and recreation facility to mean both public and private. So even those that are within neighborhoods and within HOAs will be classified as recreational and public facilities. Two sexual offenders cannot live in the same residence. Um, and in case of an emergency, offender must advise shelter personnel of their registration with the state as a sexual offender. These are all included in updating our ordinance, which I think will bring us probably one of the most updated in the state. Andrew? Yes, I think uh, what you can think of it is, is, is as far as locally is. Uh, Mascot was down here with protection. Lake County was up here. Now you're on par with Lake County and above and beyond. If you adopt the ordinance. All right, and my last question is I guess the department goes above and beyond. Do all cities require notification of their local police department if that's when we're doing above and beyond? The state statute requires. Uh, Share with them. Okay. How do our how do we let a new citizen know that so that they do pass that along? When this law is passed, all citizens in the city of Mascot are charged with constructive knowledge of all laws and regulations on the books. Okay. So ignorance of the law is not a is not an excuse, but as far as how it's uh, publicized, that's a policy matter. Okay. What I can say uh, mayor and council. Well, they are required to go to the sheriff, and we'd like to think the sheriff would notify us. The sheriff can also be notified by our updated ordinance that if someone makes notice, at least they can hopefully advise them, not only do you register with us, but you need to go right. see the local department. That would be very helpful. Mayor, I would like to note that we refer to Sheffield right at 6.38 p.m. for the record. Thank you very much. Any discussion on this? Second. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Hearing none, the motion passes 5-0. All right, now for the first reading of ordinance 2020-01-599, updating and redefining the city's legal boundary. Ordinance 2020-01-599, an ordinance of the city council of the city of Mascot, Lake County, Florida. Updating and redefining the city of Mascot's legal boundaries pursuant to Florida Statutes 166.031, subsection 3. Providing directions to the city clerk to file said update with the Department of State and Municipal Code Corporation. Providing for appeal of all conflicting ordinances, providing for severability, and providing for an effective date. Mayor Council, what ordinance are you talking about? This is, as Andrew said, it's a five year update that's uh, reported to the state and it includes anything you know, that was um, annexed into the city limits um, after the last report, um, which was April 7th of 2014. And they're used in revenue share rate allocation, um, even can directly be tied um, in reference to the census. You know, in terms of federal use in reference to um, how dollars are allocated. And again, this is the first read. Anyone got something about this? Anyone public wish to address this matter? I'm hearing and seeing none in the motion for any second. I make the motion to approve the first read. <coughs> Uh, ordinance 2001 updating and redefining the city's legal boundary. Second. Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Hearing none, motion passes. Aye. 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 Aye.
Mayor and Council um, a few years ago when the uh, property values were uh, sinking. Um, we didn't have to do this because the CRA um, didn't generate any, any revenue. Uh, and now that it does, um, the Council has to take action to move the funds from the general fund into the restricted um, CRA fund. Um, the dollar amount um, that is due this year based on the increment value uh, represents a payment to the CRA of $155,756. It stays within the same like account per se, but it's restricted on what it can be used for and, and based on your CRA plan. <coughs> Right now, 90% uh, uh, of, of, um, of last year's went to fund code enforcement because the majority of the work is in the CRA. Our CRA is pretty extensive work north and south, but it also would be what would be used if you did a 50 streetscape beautification, if there was signage, you know, or some type of economic incentive to a business involving, you know, uh, some building. Uh, upgrade or improvement all depending on what might be available in the fund. Thank you. Okay,
Uh, and then their deadline, there by there, I mean the city of Miami Beach, they'll be filing a brief, uh, I'm not quite sure exactly when they're filing, but their deadline for cities to sign on to the brief orders is December 16th. So obviously it falls between the meetings. Uh, accordingly, there was a time to get a resolution on the agenda, but resolution is not necessary. So if you're interested in, if the council is interested in having a mascot sign on the brief, and then a simple motion tonight would be all that's needed. As far as the substance, I have reviewed the brief and reviewed the law cited in the brief. Uh, the main arguments are that the circuit court that found the human rights ordinance in Orange County to be preemptive lacks subject matter jurisdiction you know, simply because Orange County was never made a part of it. Uh, that's an argument. And then the other meat and potatoes of the arguments come that uh, FICRA, which is the Florida Civil Rights Act, does not explicitly preempt uh, legislation regarding human rights. That's obviously clear. There is no explicit uh, preemption. The court hung its hat on implied preemption. And the rest of the argument, the brief argument, that there is no implied preemption, specifically because the Florida Supreme Court has said in the case law that local governments can regulate beyond the FICRA uh, mandates. So that is what the, the brief is, is tailoring its argument to. I don't have uh, any issue with any of the points of law or anything raised in there. I think that they are good arguments. Of course, I can never forecast how the 5th DCA will rule, but um, I think the brief uh, is, is something that I wouldn't have an issue putting my name on. I think from what I read and from the funding I understood the most is basically that the city was never specifically responsible for it, but because they were, even though they weren't named, they were made. Somebody was named in there? Like they weren't, they weren't specifically said, hey, you're a part of this, um, I'm missing the word right now, the filing. They, they were not named as a that's, that's correct. This is a dispute between two private parties, uh, and the city simply had an ordinance that was at play in the original case uh, that uh, allows individuals to find redress and provides a cause of action in, in court by this ordinance in Orange County. However, Orange County was not joined in, so they were not able to defend their ordinance. And that is the first and foremost uh, argument that the judge was out of line when they made the point. My first, my first intention here is that it feels like here's the bubble what was happening. They reached outside of the graphic county and pulled it in and had some nothing to do with it at that point. Or at least they didn't have a chance to, like you said, defend themselves from what they were saying. Uh, correct. I mean, it had something to do with it because the, the legislation, you know, essentially uh, regulated what was in play. It was the subject matter of the. Uh, it was the subject, how the ordinance, uh, how it worked as part of the original case. But yes, it goes outside the bubble to overreach beyond that and then uh, find that um, that ordinance unconstitutional, or in this case, not unconstitutional, preempted, uh, without having the actual party who is enforcing the ordinance as a party. All right. Okay. Question?
Councilmember Brasher uh, made a motion to remove one of the vendors from the vendor list. All that did was remove them from the list. It had nothing to do with the contract or the work agreement. So having them removed from the list at least tells me there's some question or some issue there of concern. So I need direction because based on where we're at, we just move on as is because it was not to terminate a contract. Um, what I did do, because <coughs> we do have two IT companies, um, I spoke with iTech, which is the same company that services the city of Mount Vernon. We actually recommended them to Mount Vernon when they have a hacking problem uh, in terms of there, and advised them how much would it cost if we eliminated Shea Solutions, and they said it would cost the city $2,000 more a month, so $24,000. And last year we paid Sations, uh, Shea Solutions, $26,000. And that was including a variety of projects in there. So you guys can pick whether we have one vendor or two vendors, but there isn't a dollar savings from the standpoint of how things get done. It may slow some things down. For example, your laptops were done today by Ken here and made available possibly a little quicker than we could have gotten in the turnaround. In addition to that, um, because of the short delay, we have information and reference on what are his duties and what are the duties of ITAC, what's been accomplished.
not coming with more value than just $2,600. So if it has an extra benefit, three notes I wrote here were... Well, I'll give you an example. Our entire new web page process was handled strictly by Shea Solutions. From both helping us narrate and research who the companies were, to an absolute smooth transition so the day that it went live, we had no problems in being ADA compliant. There are small little projects that are given to them that don't have to go to iTech. Can iTech do all of that? Yes. But in addition to the 33000 that they charge, that's the 2400 or 2000 additional month is just for a set number of hours. If we give them the same projects and the same items, then there's going to be additional cost on that. So, I mean, so. It's not a dollar issue, so I don't know what the issue is. So they're saying that $2,000 a month is based on what we expect them to do, and if we ask them to go above and beyond that, it's going to cost more? Yeah. yeah. If we ask them to do less, are we going to get a savings from it? No, because that's a flat fee. We buy for hours for service. And then if you have a special project, let's say you order additional servers, and it takes additional time to set them up, then new computers that get reset and whatever, then there's an added charge in terms of that process. One thing of having two companies is sometimes it helps you when one says you need to work by four servers. And we had that instance before. And with Shay, we found out that we needed only one, so say go to $12,000. We had four distinct phone companies when I was here. Think about that. I had to dial another phone number to reach the police department and the fire department. We're now consolidated under one phone system with their assistance and, 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 and their help. We had four internet networks. We weren't integrated. We're now integrated. You know, and so there is definite distinct benefit that the other company can do. But again, it's not a dollar issue, so I'm not sure why the reason change? Can we point to anything that they've done wrong? I mean, when we ask them, uh -huh. what, what did they do wrong to facilitate canceling their contract? I will not discuss it any further. Then I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't want to cancel the contract. I don't know of anything that they have done wrong for us to. Does anybody have a reason to change what we're doing right now? Anybody have a public wish to speak on this?
this business, and that is to not communicate their personal agenda to elected officials. Because when you go to elected officials, all five of you aren't here in the discussion. All five of you are not part of the decision-making process. And I don't know what information you get or you don't get. We knew back in the early part of the year that our ISO was going from a 3 to a 10. ISO, I've spoken with them. They have no intention of ever coming to a meeting and telling you anything. They won't even provide documents other than the copy of their letter that tells you what the, the rating is. And in my last conversation with them, the only way our rating changes is if we have four firefighters per shift. So that means adding six firefighters to our current shift. Adding six firefighters could run anywhere from about $550,000 to $650,000. The only way or the recommended way that you pay for that is because it's 100% fire would be the fire fee. Our fire fee currently brings us in about $277,000. So to get a fire fee to bring you in over $600,000, it would almost have to trip. And we would need a study from GSG to finalize that because you couldn't adopt a higher fee without a study to back that up. So we hear that a higher ISO rating is going to cause people's insurance to be canceled and insurance to go up. Well, at least as of today, City Hall, we haven't received a single call. We haven't received a single issue. The posting that was done on the Facebook was the fire chief's insurance agent. So I don't know what would prompt that to happen when they're not a mascot resident and they don't live here and then would post something that people need to come down here and you all need to fix a problem. In addition to that, let's just take a little look at what it is you're being asked to pay. On a typical month, we average about 120 calls. 50% of those calls are not in the city of Mascot. 50% of those calls are involving Lake County or Grove. My brother asked me today, why did they go out of the city? Well, we've had that discussion. We don't have to, but if we don't, it has a, a ripple effect involving all the other agencies, how they infill if there's a problem. So when someone used the argument that, well, if mascots not here, we can't get to their houses. Well, if we're out of town 50% of the time, that means somebody else is answering that call. Um, secondly, ISO only rates you on structural fires. They are about 5% of the calls. 95% of our calls are medical. They give you no credit for having two paramedics per shift and probably being the most, one of the most qualified medical departments in the county because they're basing everything on fire calls. And of the fire calls that we answer, the majority of them are outside the city. So again, we're being asked to look at spending $600,000 for the county, for Groveland, that $600,000 does not get a mascot resident any safer because most of the calls are medical and a paramedic shows up. So adding $600,000 to your budget regularly, annually reoccurring, doesn't mean that more calls will be in Mascot. And it doesn't mean that anybody in Mascot is any safer. In addition to that, I went back and I looked at some numbers and if we tried to say, well, let's not raise the fire fee, let's do it with taxes. Based on current values today, our tax rate is 7.55. Mm -hmm. 
And remember that rate went down from 9.6147. Even at 7.55, this year is the first year that we exceeded revenue than what we had 10 years ago. So we're just technically just above break even, but we've got a lower millage rate. The highest we could raise the millage rate is 9.5371 because there's an MSTU of 0.4629 that's charged for the ambulance. So the two added together makes 10 mils. We can't go higher than 10 mils by state law. If we went to a 9.5371 mills, it would generate $320,000, $320,381. That would about cover three people. So we'd still have to raise the fire fee to cover the others. The other two factors that we don't know yet is we don't have a final price on the station. But I know it's already in excess of three million and was told that we should have the numbers by the end of the year on the estimated price. The fire department also has a wish of ordering a new truck at a half a million dollars. And I've asked the chief to hold off on ordering a truck until we get a final price on the fire station so we know what we're getting into. There are safer grants out there where we can get firefighters and the federal government would pay a portion of it for the first couple of years. But there is no free money, there is no free lunch, it becomes our cost. And when I got here, part of the problem was is that we had firefighters from a safer grant and we weren't going to be able to keep them. And we were looking at the position of actually having to pay money back on the grant. And just through attrition, folks left on their own and got us down to the level so we didn't have to lay anybody off and we didn't have to pay anything back. My fear is, is to count on future money to pay today's cost is what got us into trouble in the first place. And to do that again, to be to me, would be very scary and foolish. One, we've been on an economic cycle for a long time. It'd be our luck in about two or three years when that grants up. Building stops, impact fee stops, revenue and values could go down, and then we're back at a point where either raising village or fire fee. And if we are going to look at doing a fire fee, not only should we look at the six firefighters, but we should include the truck in there so that we know exactly what we can cost and how we can fund that. And so we've got a couple of choices. Um, is potentially approve a $9,000 to have GSP update the fire fee and come back and tell us what the fee should be if you need to cover a little over a million dollars. We know what the tax increase would be, so we could ask them, if you max out the tax rate, then what do you need to do for a fire fee to cover that amount? Because remember, all of this was about ISO. So the only way you fix the ISO is six people. There's no band-aid in between. It is six people. You hire three people, you still have an ISO of ten. So what do the people get? They're still going to tell you, supposedly, their insurance is going to go up. Not every insurance company uses ISO. Insurance is a commodity. People can shop the market. And insurance rates can range, even on a house, thousands of dollars between one company and another. So a consumer has some flexibility if they see an increase in their insurance to shop around. Now, unless their insurance is increasing by more than $450, which would be about what the fire fee would have to be just to cover the firefighters. I'm not sure why we would charge $440, $450 for somebody to save $20, $30, $40, or $100 for one year on their insurance when there's no guarantee that insurance wouldn't go up the next year. 
And this should have been part of the budget process. It was part of the last budget process. And we dealt with this in July. And quite honestly, I thought it was done until I know the item was brought up with elected officials behind my back. Can you look into a little bit more information for us with that? Like how? With the Lake County? Meaning what, what talk to Lake County about what they're paying us or how we can operate? Well, when they're at a mascot, Lake County has to come in, right? Lake County or Groveland or Claremont? Lake County never comes in a mascot. One time, probably every six months. Why? Because they're too far out. They're way, way away. That's why we're coming to our area to get to pass the hospital. Which we don't have to. We don't have to. No. No. So I, I think the Lake County should pay for legal one fire fire. When we're getting ripped off, they're going to turn around. So maybe part of the discussion is to talk with Lake County and see if there are other options on how we provide fire for the city aspect. Can you do that? I, direction has to come from the Mayor Council. I'm going to give my thoughts because I, I like to talk about it. Like, get those thoughts out there so people can tell me what I'm thinking is right or wrong. Because I am new here, but I do. I've been thinking about this for a few days because I'm on Facebook. I'm very known in that realm. People tag me and they add me to things and ask me questions right away. So I've been thinking about this since I saw the post on Friday. And I told people, you know, come to me, ask those questions here. I'm not going to discuss that there. But all these points and all these numbers you've given me, all these thoughts you're giving me right now, and I'm hearing and seeing is that, to be blunt, how it came to be, I don't care. That's, that's your job, honestly, to take care of that. I don't care how we got here. I do know that I called my insurance company, and I asked them why my insurance went up $260.49. And it's because this added $1,200 to it, but because my house is less than three years old, and my roof is less than three years old, I got a discount that covered eight, nine hundred dollars of it. So this is definitely going to be an impact. Also, it just hit in October. October 1st is when the new cycle went with ISO. My insurance doesn't renew until the end of December, but they decided my rate back in October. So people may or may not be seeing it yet. So it may not have come, you know, ringing phones or anybody getting calls yet. They may not know. Some people don't even know if their insurance changes until they all of a sudden see their, their bill goes up a few hundred dollars. Um, if I didn't have the surplus of my escrow, I'd have to pay that double next year. Not just the increase, but the double the increase in one year. And they're going to take that out no matter what I do. So that's added money right there for me. That, that's essentially $520 an hour. That would have been just for me. And I would have had to deal with that. And then even if we tripled that, it still wouldn't cover my difference. And be almost around, it'd be around almost the same at that point. There's a lot of numbers I'm hearing the prices of, of three firefighters six firefighters, there's no way that we should ever just basically one and a half times our tax on people. That doesn't seem like a lot of people do. Same thing with fire impact. It should be, mine is only, only mine is this affected. It could be affected more. It could be affected less. I call State Farm and get a second one because again, if I wanted to figure out, State Farm twice as much. They don't use ISO at all. That's my call. There's just twice as much my current one. So I heard six hundred and five thousand personnel, five hundred thousand for a truck, and three to four million dollars on a fire station. I'm hearing over five million dollars potentially we're going to spend over the next three, four, ten years. I don't know how long we have to do that for, but I'm guessing we don't have that kind of money. The, to start off the, the three million we borrowed for the fire station is a thirty, thirty um, year. <coughs> the best you can do on a fire truck is a four year. You can do ten years on a fire truck. Well. It's 125000 a year for five years, is what we do four years. That's what God has put under our sheet. Right. So, so, you can do it. So, so we'll extend it. debt and just get further in debt. So let's just say, for sake of this, that's not let's say, but it is bad if you have to tax your citizens to pay for it. There is right. a money trip. Let's call this real quick. Okay? 10 years, $50,000 a year for a $500,000 truck. 30 years on three, let's just say it's just $3 million for the fire station, okay? We're now talking about $150,000 increase in what we have to bring in. And saying everything else is the same, that $150,000 a year has to come out of our taxes. That taxes, that's over 10% increase, so now we've got to increase our taxes by over 10% to make this happen. After we've had year after year after year of rollbacks. If the county has options, it's free to ask them. Does anybody else disagree with me that we shouldn't ask the options? Well, we've had this discussion on several occasions where the Lake County amount that they're paying us isn't equivalent to how many times we actually respond to them. And they basically have shut us down. On the payment, well, yes. On the payment. Well, I think it needs to really come up and 
invite whoever they are to hear and, and start talking to us. Not just to the staff, but tell us. Because we're the ones that's going to be strapped with making these decisions, raising taxes. That's not going to happen so far. But somebody within the county needs to tell us why they're not going to entertain this when we're spending mascot tax dollars for Lake County citizens. And I understand you talked about coming from the What I was going to say, the problem you've got there is staff doesn't make that decision. The elected officials do. I have no control over Lake County Board of Commissioners coming here and explaining to you why they voted to cut paying cities or why they set to that amount. The best I can do is talk with the county manager and the assistant county manager involving what options are there. Okay. If they're not going to increase the 32,000, I, I think it's well worth opening that discussion again. And if we have to go to a council meeting up there or a county commission meeting or something like that, then we all five need to go and sit in a council meeting or a commission meeting and ask them point blank and put it at the political level. I don't want to be political about it, but it's becoming political. It doesn't need to be political. And a lot of this can be solved because we are supporting the county residents. Every additional new dime that we spend, in addition to what we're spending now, is spent 50% on behalf of somebody else. And, and we're asking the city of Mascot residents to pay 100% of that. I, I, I can't agree with that. The county commissioners make their decision based on the information their staff gets them. So I think a staff person and a commissioner should come here. I, I'm okay with that too. You can think that, but I can't make an elected official come. Could I? Well, what, a, what an invitation. Yeah, an invitation. Because I'm not sitting here and have to increase 10% taxes, and we're going to go right back to a, a, a 10 millage rate? No, I don't think so. We'll have to come up with some other ideas or some other way to do this. That's why I, I, so you know, my job is to give you at least the facts that we have. The only two ways to pay for it are millage. We don't have six hundred thousand mm dollars, -hmm. and if you use reserves, you're spending reserves on reoccurring expenses. So what happens after three years? You have no reserves, but you still have those expenses, and those expenses will continue to go up. The insurance goes up. There's increased liability with each new firefighter we hire. That's another insurance policy we have to get involved in. <coughs> Answer plan. So it's it's an expensive proposition. I got one more key point that I, that I forgot to write down here. We'll start out by by as a member of one of the new homes in this area, I know how fast growth is going. Okay. If this starts affecting, let's say somebody does get twelve hundred dollar a year more expensive policy. That's medium case scenario from what I looked at and read up to all like legal and state conference. That's about $100 a month they have to pay in their escrow. So to get approved for those new houses that we're building, they now have to make an additional $220 a month on top of that. The longer we take to do this, the slower it gets because we have to have a resolution. Once we get the people in place, whatever our option is, then we can send it to ISL if they can reevaluate it, but it takes a quarter or two to get it in place. So if this does change, because we don't know right now, we can see that growth slow. And it could do more hurt. <coughs> so I think we need to get these decisions quickly. So if we're going to invite somebody, we can't wait month to month to month to do this. We can get the information, even if you know, even from from GSG, you needed to all in plenty of time for spring budget. But you couldn't change. Well, you could change the fire fee <coughs> after public hearings and advertisings and what have you. Um, but you couldn't change the millage. Until budget time. But you yeah. said that was nine thousand dollars talking to the county and zero dollars. That's right. Yeah. So the 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 nine nine thousand is a validated study if that was an option. Okay. Yeah, you have to ask them to, to reevaluate. Yeah, because it's like impact fees. We can look at numbers and guesstimate based on what it raises now, but then they do it based on percentage of commercial, residential, but we're a mainly residential community, so the bulk of our fire assessment fees come off of, you know, single-family residential housing. So we're at least looking at the potential. If we go that direction, we're looking at already having to have in our minds that we would be okay with adding $230 a year in people's impact fee, theoretically, for short-term. As, as, so as, 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 as an assessment.
assessment, yes, to, to, to maybe cover the cost of the personnel. And that's the amount of the truck at the station. Census to go in and talk to the county about options and, and why the decision was made where they're at and are there other ways out of this and them sharing in costs since they're benefiting from 50% of what we're doing. Then I can initiate that if you want that first and hold off on GSG, but at the same time, these things take time, so it's not the kind of thing that you'd want to do the study in the spring. When you're in the middle of budget, you at least want to have that answer ahead of time, so at least you knew what you'd be doing. I'm certainly asking staff, like you suggested, and like Mayor Pro Tem Sheffield said, asking the council what they're suggesting. Do you guys have a direction that would you prefer to have happen because of the timeline? I don't know. When's their next meeting? I don't know when their next meeting is. It, that, that's yeah, it wouldn't be a meeting. They wouldn't have this at their meeting, right. at the county meeting. This, there would be staff meetings at a point because they'd have to get their information together to present to their councils. We want to try to gather all this information before the next budget meeting in April or May so that we can try to make some kind of determination of what we have to do. If we're going to bite the bullet and tax our folks an additional 10% or raise the millage rate, I want to know ahead of time. I don't want to just spring it and there it is or whatever. But I'm trying to digest this, this report and, I'm, and there's no make no sense whatsoever in this report. It's basically telling us right now that we don't have any fire hydrants in our city. Because to get a level 10, you have to have a zero to nine points. And in there it says you can get 10 points for having fire hydrants. I don't get how they come up with this, but that's another conversation in a different direction. Yeah. I I don't get it. And then the credit for ladder service, 0.08 points. Uh, again. The issue of how we got here is, is irrelevant or there. But if you're looking at as ISO as being the standard, and again, they're a private company that sells their information to insurance companies. They're not federal. They're not state. They're not accredited by anybody. And they've made one decision, one decision only. You don't have enough firefighters. We don't care what else you have. 
We don't care that two trucks are called on every call. We don't care that you have an agreement with every other city for mutual aid. It doesn't matter. You don't have four firefighters that respond to every call. Fire them. So if we get 10 calls a year, we're talking about $600,000 for 10 calls because none of the medical calls count, which are about 95% of our business. I think it's talking about waiting until April or beyond is that we're not going to be, if we do see this impact come in, if the rates do go up and we start seeing people with insurance rates going up, we're not going to be able to fix it until January next year. So we're going to spend the next 12 months doing this. October. Right. Is when it would go through fact. Well, right, but we would stop the pay to We stop the budget. So we wouldn't be able to get these people here today. We stop the budget. They can't just walk in and take the money and start working. I'm sure you get close, but the thing is, I, are there options that don't take us that long that would be easier for us to digest? That could be in discussions with Lake County to see if there's options that. I'd like to know that if there's an option there, or if there are options there, I'd like to know those sooner than later. I don't want to wait. I, I don't want to ask anybody to come if here. If there is a majority consensus, and that will be my first goal. <coughs> and and I, will, I, will do, I will move as fast as we can with the county. I, 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 say, I say we can give consensus to ask the questions. And try ask to the question. Figure it out. Ask for options. And if we can get those questions quickly, then we still have time. Then if we have to fall back on GSG. Do a range study fire so we can be well. prepared for both that and taxes. So it gives us a chance to use all three options and hopefully something sooner than later. Okay. okay. Everybody's in joint consensus so we ask the county for options. I'm good with that. Yeah. I'm good? Yeah. Sure. Yes. Okay. Okay. Just to cover the bases, since there was some talk on if uh, any of the council members wish to attend at any point in time at the commission meeting, council, uh, pardon me, county commission meeting. Uh, I would just recommend that you contact city staff and let them know. So that way, in case there are two or more members that will be in attendance, that they can notice that. So we'll be fine. Take precaution with the uh, sunshine laws. Okay. So if more than one of shows up to a meeting at their meeting and speaks publicly, we would still have to notice it before more than one of you might be somewhere, even though they've noticed their meeting is about the meeting. We'd still have to notice it in case. Okay. Two more showed up. Yeah, well, I, I do notification even if you guys go to training or anything that I'm aware of. I always post it out. To see you all. Okay. One last thing I, I, I meant to, to state because a comment was made at the last meeting because we moved $250,000 over to reserve. And comment was that could have been used for fire. It was excess money in one year. There's no guarantee. And secondly, it came from the building department. And we're a real fine line. Florida law does not allow your building department to be an enterprise fund. Last week, Groveland mailed out 5,700 checks, totaling $1.3 million, refunding the people on permits because they took in more money than what they could justify. And that 250 that we moved over came from building permits. It wasn't extra taxes. And we're working hard internally to come up with everything to show what we charge is justified based on administration and cost because it's not supposed to be an enterprise fund. So saying that we can just use reserves or that we can take excess money and pay for that is, is an invalid assumption. Just uh, one, one more thing for you, Jeremy. Uh, just as a point of clarification, two members showing up at a city commission meeting, or uh, pardon me, a council commission, a county commission meeting, does not necessarily create a violation. Uh, but having the notice there creates a prophylactic plan to make sure there will not be a violation. Because you do have to have a two way conversation. About city business for there to be a violation. But when you've got two people there who are talking about things that affect the city, there can easily be a violation. So I just want to make a point just because there are two people there, not a violation necessarily, but still 
want to check in with staff and make sure it is noticed because then
we have global medical departments. So, so are, they also around, around waiting for are they also evaluating the fire calls that we're doing for Lake County, or is it just our calls? Or is it every call that our unit has a response? Randy, Randy, Randy. Well, I don't understand. It's all the same aspect. Last year we had one major fire in our So that, in a sense, that means even higher, like six hundred thousand dollars. We had six home. or eight calls in the county and drove in area for fire. fire. Okay. Well, I got the consensus to please contact the county tomorrow and get some information and dialogue going so I can bring back some options. Can you email out to us as soon as you get it? Pardon? Can you email out to us like as soon as you get it? Because it's the time thing for me. I'm, I'm, I'm I will get it to you all. Is I get the information so that everybody has it, okay. and one so we can discuss it in the meeting because this is the only time we can all do that right. together. The only question I need to ask then is, do you want to hold off on the GSG at this point? I don't want to spend nine thousand dollars. It might be something free. Okay. 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 That's two. All right. Is anybody else? Can you not use the previous one we had? Because that went up to two hundred and fifty-three. That would only allow us to raise it to 53. You're still going to have to double it above that, and in order to double it, you need to study. 